Hello everyone and welcome back to Mr. and Mrs. Social Studies. My name is Sarah and today I've got 10 different classroom decor ideas for social studies teachers specifically. Now of course when talking about classroom decor it's so important to just emphasize at the beginning that the amount or the quality of classroom decor you have is not what determines your worth or value as a teacher. Classroom decor is a nice bonus, but it is not a replacement for you being you and yourself as a teacher and connecting with your students. So just wanted to get that out of the way. When we're thinking about classroom decor that serves a purpose, there are three general types of classroom decor we often see, and you can reflect about these concepts in your space. There is, of course, your inspiration, your inspirational quotes, or the posters that can help inspire your students to be better humans. There's also content specific posters and decor that connect to the topics students will be learning about in your classroom. Maybe these are images related to different units that you'll be covering that they can kind of see and visualize. Maybe there's something like map related about the locations you'll be studying or different you know, features of, of maps or of whatever subject area really. And then there's also more of the administrative classroom management side of posters which can really apply to any subject. So these might be your class policies or procedures that exist. Maybe signage related to different needs in the classroom such as a turn-in tray or a lost and found bin sign. And these three types of classroom decor can manifest themselves in different ways and today I want to show you 10 different specific examples of classroom decor ideas that we've done or we've had success with that you also might want to give a try. But again, remember don't go overboard, don't feel a lot of pressure in this, just pick what makes the most sense for your space, your goals, and the timeline you have. Speaking of timelines, if you are a history teacher, a historical timeline visual can be so helpful so students, especially our visual learners, can make sense of when they are learning about different topics. Now I have a full video about this that we set up a couple years ago when uh, putting an ancient Civ timeline in Jake's classroom, so I will link that below in this video. But the idea is having some sort of visual, ideally color coded, but that's maybe just me uh, being excited about <laughs> color coding. The idea that students can make sense of when these different civilizations or groups existed. Now we have the ancient Civ version as well as an early American history one for like seventh grade and a modern US history one for like eighth grade. And the nice thing about these is that students can see how these civilizations kind of stack on top of each other so they can see when there's overlap and better understand a sense of time. Especially in ancient civilizations when we're looking at, you know, millions of years ago or thousands of years ago, it's tough for students to make those connections, so a visual really helps. Likewise, content specific posters can be helpful, especially giving students a little bit of a roadmap of where they're going in the year. I just talked about the timeline post but what's cool we have corresponding little unit posters that can be printed out and go above or below the timeline if you want and so that was a way to kind of tie things together students could see with the color coding that you know ancient Egypt ruled for these two time periods but then there was also a corresponding ancient Egypt poster that had some visuals about it so the idea of having some of these units laid out with a poster can be pretty cool and it's also important when you're doing this to not go overboard on information on these. I know that we had a couple posters that just were so full of information and it's kind of impractical if a student's sitting at their desk they're not necessarily going to be reading the poster and, and getting the value out of it. So we personally do try to keep things a little bit more simple and less information. We recently created some grapes posters for um, the components of civilization, geography, religion, achievements, politics, economics, and society. And we also have those set up that can be a nice addition. They're simple, they've got the definitions on there, and they can just be a helpful visual if you are returning to the concept of grapes later on in the year to have some of those content specific options. It's also super important to have classroom rules and procedures printed out somewhere on your wall. It's one thing to go over them when you're talking about your syllabus, but students aren't necessarily going to remember that. If you've got a clear visual in the room, it's super easy for students and yourself to remember what you're holding 
your students accountable with. And also, if a student's acting up, it's so easy to just be, you know, pointing to that sign and say, hey, look, you are doing that thing that you're not supposed to be doing. It's very clear and it's just a great way to have easier communication and improved classroom management. Don't go overboard on this one. One of my past mistakes, which you can see from a classroom tour of mine from several times ago, is that I did this A to Z procedures thing. I got excited. I read a classroom management book and just uh, was, was very excited to put that together. That was way too much. Don't be like me. Uh, don't, don't try to teach the kids 26 procedures because that's too much. Um, with that, I focused on some of the most important ones and then made visuals for those. You know, that's how I've kind of improved things since. And we also have a travel themed classroom decor set that I put together some travel themed classroom rules for that are just four general rules that can apply to a lot of other components like be punctual, be polite, be present, you know, what those mean and those kind of expectations um, I think were really helpful. I do believe early finisher activities are a must, especially as a form of differentiation. Some students are just going to always finish an assignment so quickly and then you're faced with that, what do I do now question. And it's one thing to just have the system set up, but I have found that having a visual in my classroom where the student could go look and decide what they were going to do was a game changer. We have a video about this, although I will say at that point, um, I had not known as much about design. So they definitely don't look as good as the ones that um, are now available in our TPT store. But we've got 26 different activities, A to Z, I know I like the A to Z thing. Maybe, maybe you can relate as a fellow teacher, but it can be a great bulletin board, easy to cut out. Each card is half a page and there's a corresponding paper activity that goes along with it. There's also a digital choice board that comes with that resource. And it's just easy because students can go up to the board, pick an activity that they want to do no prep on your behalf once you set it up. And then I had a little crate with the hanging folders and they're all alphabetized A through Z. Students could pick the correct uh, or corresponding sheet. So if they look up there and they want to do activity G, they can find activity G in the folder and start working on that activity without any effort being required on your behalf. So it's a really effortless way to take care of those early finishers and always be prepared. Also, if uh, emergency strikes, feel free to use one of those 26 activities for part of your lesson. Of course, inspirational quotes have a time and a place in your classroom and they can be a fun addition. You can keep this really simple if you want and just find some of your favorite quotes online and print them out. A great hack that applies to a lot of these tips, if you don't want to spend money on getting, you know, color printing or you don't have access to that, uh, get some Astro Brights paper so I've got, I've got a pack here and this is the variety pack. So there's lots of different colors. I've pulled out a lot of the blue and green ones uh, for social studies things. But with that in mind, print out whatever you're going to print out, just even on your regular school copier, you can just print out black and white. And even though you're not using any fancy ink, the fact that it's on colored paper will really stand out. So it's a good affordable hack, no matter what you're printing out to print it on here. So even if you just have type out your favorite quotes on a Google doc or a word doc and blow them up a bit size wise and print them out, that's a really effortless way to do that. Or I know I mentioned some of the other things like the early finisher um, activities. There's a black and white version that you could print out on these if you wanted to still add a pop of color. With the inspirational quotes, we do have an ancient Civ and US history version, which feature quotes from historical figures from both the US and from ancient civilizations. So that's kind of a cool way to tie your content area in with inspirational quotes. But there's also no shortage of inspirational quote posters that you can purchase at the store as well. So lots of options there. If Jake or Mr. Social Studies was in this video, he would really like this next tip and that has to do with maps. He says you're only as good of a history teacher as the number of maps or globes you have. I think he said it in multiple videos at this point, but especially if you're looking for a last minute option, maps are definitely your friend. Of course, we have to be careful of how different maps convey uh, power dynamics and 
how students perceive different regions or countries to be. We do have a really interesting lesson you can do with your students about map projections uh, that may be worthwhile no matter what kinds of maps you have in your classroom to help them see that not all maps are created equal. You could do physical, political maps, uh, U.S. map if you're teaching U.S. history, and these can go really anywhere. You, maybe you already have some or you can find some cool options online. The one I actually use in my classroom, unfortunately it wasn't the best projection, but it was a dry erase map and I certainly use that a lot. It was helpful to be able to write on it or draw on it or like circle and identify places just to give your visual learners a chance to see these places in action. So that could be worthwhile checking out or just use you know whatever you have. A budget tip I somehow got on the mailing list for Doctors Without Borders and two or three times they actually sent me maps. Um, I didn't specify that I was a teacher or anything but on one side it was showing all the work they were doing on the other side it was just a world map so that's a super budget option if you are looking for a map but don't want to buy it. I can't guarantee they will send you one but it, it could be worth a try. The last thing I'll say about maps, one fun thing I did for a couple years, it worked better with younger students. My sixth and seventh graders liked it better than my eighth grade students did, so food for thought. I actually did like this US map collage opportunity so students could bring in photos of themselves uh, when they had traveled to different places or if they wanted to share you know, a little bit more of their heritage um, and where you know, their ancestors or where they were from. And it was a cool way to bring in you know, some of their own stories and see themselves in the class. So that's an option. Like I said, the younger students liked it more than my eighth graders did. I ended up having to offer some extra credit to my eighth graders just to get some, some more pictures in there. But that could be a fun option as well uh, if, you, if you wanted to do something a little bit more interactive. Next up, I know I previously mentioned the travel themed classroom decor set we put together. And specifically, one of my favorite parts about it are these skyline posters or like skyline printouts. And the cool thing about them is that they feature skylines from all over the world or I've got all 50 states and they also already are black and white. So that's another easy printing option if you don't want to you know, spend anything on decor and just print them out really quick at school. I probably had too much fun designing them because it tapped into my super nerdy geography self that is obsessed with all things travel and um, architecture. So it was quite fun to set up and I hope you like them. Another topic we've been very passionate about is using word walls. I've got some word wall cards here printed out. This is from our general social studies terms. This set includes government words, geography words, just general social studies words, economic words, and they are all color coded as you're seeing a pattern. And these are the same size as any of our word wall cards. They are two to a page, so you can just cut them in half. If you want, you can cut out the little white border that's around the page or leave that there. Totally flexible. But with these, they are a nice way to help your students visualize uh, some of the key terms they'll be using. And we printed them so they include both the definition as well as an image. So you're able to help both the visual learners and have the official definition there. So with that, these definitely we highly recommend. Now you might decide to have it be a rotating bulletin board and adjust them as you go. You could have your students make them as you go if you were looking for um, a no prep option that kids can, kids can make, or you can start off your year with a selection of the terms. So just to use an example, um, we currently have word wall cards for both uh, ancient civilizations as well as early American history. In addition to these general ones, we've got some constitution ones and some map skills options. And with those, for at least the ancient civ and the early American history, all of the cards are color coded by unit, also based upon that timeline and those uh, subject posters I talked about at the start of this video. So I know everything's color coded, but the idea is you could, if you wanted, print out different cards from each civilization or each unit and kind of mix them all up on the word wall like display. But the nice thing is the color coding would help students understand which 
unit that word corresponded with. So that can be a nice organizational option. Or if you're looking for something that you don't want to have to change out during the year, maybe that's where these general social studies terms come into play. Primary source, democracy, artifact, trade, profit, civics, environment. Obviously these are all general words and they're just kind of shuffled up here, but that can be an easy option. Also, there is a black and white version included, so maybe you do your own color coding in the form of the Astro Brights paper, like I talked about. Tip number nine is a little funny, but immensely helpful, very affordable, and some really cool options. So, I, like I've talked about before, I was a nerd um, and really loved all things architecture and geography. So, in high school, I actually had an ex-boyfriend get me this book on landmarks, and I loved it. It was a really great gift. Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> but with that in mind, when you know first year of teaching came around and I didn't have enough decor, what did I do? I went to that book and I destroyed it. I <laughs> ripped it up and ripped all the pages out. It actually they ripped out very easily, which was awesome. And I had all of these beautiful full color landmark images from around the world. Now they are a little faded because they have been up in classrooms for years. Um, but both Jake and I were able to uh, divide up the images that made sense for each of us and hang these up in the room. If you go to a bookstore, they often have clearanced books. Or if you go to like Goodwill or a secondhand shop, there's so many books there. Find a coffee table style book that has beautiful images. Maybe it's a travel book, um, but there are certain very large books that often have beautiful images like this. And if you're looking for minimal effort, minimal cost, you might be able to find something really cool that you can then cut up or rip up and use for your classroom decor without needing to print anything. So I highly recommend checking out those kind of options to see what you might find. Classroom decor idea number 10 is probably the least effort. So if you're last minute kind of person, this might be a good fit. This idea is creating an interactive bulletin board or just section of your classroom that's going to be all about getting to know the students. With this, all you would need to do would be to come up with some sort of prompt for them and set up some sort of background, whether that's butcher block paper or even just a set of wall or part of your classroom where you want to do this. And then on one of the first days of school, you're going to have students complete something that can either be a get to know you activity or something with their goals that they want to achieve. And we will put what they do up on the wall. So with that, there's a lot of different options. I know when I was doing the travel themed classroom decor, I had students uh, create little flag visuals um, based upon either a place they wanted to go in the future or something related to their heritage or ancestry. And in doing that, not only was it really cool for students to showcase, you know, part of themselves or their hopes um, in the classroom as a visual, but it also was a great way to add some color and um, nice decor to a part of my classroom that I didn't actually have to do much. We do have that flag resource linked in our store if that's also something you're interested in. Another example of something that we want to create but haven't yet, so feel free to take the idea and run with it. We want to work on like a movie classroom decor theme. And what I was thinking the interactive piece could be there is students could create, you know, like a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, you know, for themselves. So like write their name on the star and then a few other things about them or other interests they have, maybe goals or dreams. And that could be a fun uh, element to put up. It not only makes the classroom more personal, but then also can serve as a great get to know you activity. and you don't really have to do much of the work. The kids create their own you know, component of it and then can put it where they want on the interactive board. So those are just lots of options that you can consider for decorating your classroom. I have all the links below to anything that I mentioned as well as if you haven't already, if you're a new teacher, get our new teacher checklist. There, it's a free resource linked below that has a lot of other helpful tips and of course, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel up here. So many more back to school videos coming your way very soon. Have a wonderful day. Bye.